yeah, probably looks like everybody we've got for now. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for, for coming to another ACF Chat Fridays. We are doing a slightly different session this week. We've got a demo from Damon um, Cook from our DevRel team um, doing an ACF Forms demo, which is great. We, let me just go through some of the updates. I think I'll probably mention this at the end, but we're gonna change the schedule for Chat Fridays to be every other week to now every month. So we can perhaps have a bit more, um, a bit more of a planned topic to talk about or demos, get some preparation for that, but also, um, yeah have have a little bit irregular so it will hopefully get some more people coming along to it every time uh obviously we're going to do a video of this or we'll we are recording this session we'll put it on youtube and we'll do a blog post on the acf blog afterwards uh what else is happening just check it's recording we are still running the this year's acf annual survey i think we said we'd close it at the end of july but it's just running over uh let me just put this to everyone. It's running over a few days, so that doesn't matter. So if you haven't taken the ACF survey yet um, and you do have a few minutes to spare, we'd be much appreciated if you could fill that in. And if you have already done it, then thank you. That's amazing. Um, what are we? We uh, we did a release this week. Is that right? We did. Yes, we did. Uh, ACF 6.3. Hang on. I'm losing track of. ACF 6.3.5. I'm talking about so many releases recently so that came out yesterday uh yeah i'm losing total track time it's the 2nd of august that is uh, a small bug fix release uh some of the stuff around acf block validation that came in 6.3 um some bugs around that so if you haven't updated and you, you've been using some of those things then yeah hopefully that fixes things for people I think that's about it. So yeah, we can, uh, Damon, I'll hand it over to you if that's all right. You can do your intro, you can get a crack in. And then we, if anyone's got any questions, um, ACF questions in general, um, or questions around the demo, stick them in the chat, stick them in the Q&A, uh, or you know, feel free to chat at the end, I guess. Um, but yeah, thanks, Damon, for coming. Over to you. All righty. Thanks, Ian. Um, yeah, so I wanted to give a demo of ACF forms, which actually I was pretty new to, um, and it was really quite handy and easy to use. Um, but I'd be curious folks that are here today, just to hear how you're using it and if you've used it in the past and, um, yeah, so drop that while I demo stuff, but, um, if not, then hopefully this will give you a, a you know, give you some excitement to use it. So my use case that I set up here was a uh, just a, a way for somebody to submit a new recipe from the front end of a site. So have a few fields for name and email, um, and then some recipe details of the name and ingredients and some prep times, and they can attach an image. Um, and once they submit, then it would trigger an email to the WordPress, uh, site admin and, um, save a draft of the recipe to the backend for review. So let's take a peek around how we have things set up in the back here. Um, I have ACF 6.3.5, the latest installed. Um, and then I created a child theme of 2019 default theme. And that is it as far as setup. Um, and then hop over here. Um, I created a recipes post type and we'll, I don't think I did too much. It's just really recipes and then singular label. And then under advanced, I don't really think I touched, I, I think I, Altered some of these checkboxes to get, you know, title, um, custom feet. Well, there's, these were default, but I, I think I just toggled some things off actually. And then just set a custom icon um, using the new handy icon picker, which was easy. So that gives us our, our custom post type here, um, which it will, will associate in a second with the form on the front end. Um, and then as far as the, the fields that populate our form, 
Um, those are all established as a field group over here. Um, I have two group field types with nested subfields in them. Um, first, yeah, yeah, which I just demoed. Yeah, so first name, last name, and all that information. And uh, most of the stuff I made required, and I'll I'll show you. It, it does uh, a lot of you know it handles all the validation on the front end, which is amazing. So um, a lot of these are required because just because I wanted those to be required for the recipe. So. Um, all right. So let's see. And I also have the, I'm using local. Um, so we have uh mail debugging with the, the mail pit, uh, option enabled, and I can just actually show that real quick. So for folks that aren't familiar, uh, if you have a site open on local, you can launch mail pit and it allows you to kind of debug, um, emails locally. So, um, let's, I'll take a peek at the code first, and then I'll kind of show the, the end user kind of workflow. Um, so here I am in VS code and the 2019 child theme, and this is kind of, uh, pretty, you know, standard stuff. I'm just in queuing, uh, the parent style sheet and the child, uh, child theme style sheet. So I'll collapse that, but. Um, the heart of it is here where we get into uh, registering the form. Uh, we're using ACF register form, and this allows for actually um, a bunch of uh, handy, I think I have the uh, documentation open, but I think uh, we're also probably sharing the links, but um, Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right. Yeah, one, two, three, there, there we go. Register form. Yeah, so um, all these items are documented on the ACF register form documentation, but you know we're passing in our field group, which we created in the back end. Uh, this is for the form ID, um, where we want the instructions placed. You can pass that along. Um, and then here is where we're targeting the recipe post type. And we want to set the new submission as a draft because we don't want to publish it right away. We want um, you know, those, those items to be reviewed. Um, and then for post ID, if you pass along the new post, you're telling um, you know, ACF form to basically create a new post. Um, whereas you can use these, these forms to you know, do a lot of other things. You could edit an existing post or edit an existing post type. And um, so, yeah, so we're, we want intentionally to create a new uh, recipe post when this is submitted. And then we just pass along some other information, um, the, va the verification message and what we want the button to say. And we just hook that on the ACF init. So it's really early on in ACF uh, lifecycle. Um, and then I'll come back to this, but that's kind of the heart of where we're registering the form. And then I create a new page template and then, um, to kind of output this form, there's kind of two basic requirements. We have to include this ACF form head, which, um, passes along a bunch of the, the form handlers for ACF. And then. Uh, right down here is where we call our new recipe or just passing in the ID of what we registered in the functions.php file here. Um, and that gives us, I'll hop over to, let's see, actually, here we go. So here's a kind of a logged out user experience of seeing the form. Um, so I'll just uh, fill this out real quick and just give a, and actually, before I get too far, just to show um, field validation, you know, ACF passes along all this great handy functionality. It's validating all these required fields for us. So um, we're going to say, let's see, uh, since I'm such a wonderful uh, cook, <laughs> we're going to do burnt toast. Toast, uh, burn it. Yeah, that's that's my recipe. See prep time one minute, and we'll say twenty five minutes of cook time. 
really burn that. Um, and then we can attach a picture, which is optional here. I think I got some saved stuff here. Yeah, I'll just attach this lasagna photo and submit that. And this is kind of what we passed along, recipe submitted. And then if we hop back over to the admin kind of experience, you can see, you know, an, an email has been triggered. It says a new recipe is submitted, a burnt toast. Um, click here to review. So you can kind of see, uh, I'll, I'll show this too. I just kind of modified the single template in the 2019 to output our meta fields here. Um, but this is, you know, you could come here as the, um, admin and go ahead and publish this if you like it and then view it on the front end and it's published. Um, so to hop back over and just kind of step through some of the other uh, additional functionality I added here. So once the form submitted, um, we do a few extra things uh, using this other hook, ACF save post. Um, I'm using the name field, which is a uh, ACF uh, field. And we're actually using that to set the title of the recipe when it's submitted. So um, that's one additional kind of check. We're, we're grabbing the recipe details and then we're getting the name field and sending it as the post title. And we use a WP update post for that. And then to trigger the email, um, we're actually just using a, a WordPress hook to target the recipe post type. And when it's set to draft, we just trigger an email and pass along um, all the pertinent information to the email. And then the only other item on the show is just the single recipe, which is really, um, oh, no, actually it's nested, sorry. Yeah, it's here, content recipe. So this is where the single final published uh, recipe is displayed. We're just kind of grabbing all our ACF uh, field data. And then um, really this is just 2019 templating here. And then we just put in our logic to display the, the, the output here of prep times and ingredients and steps and the thumbnail. Um, one thing I found tricky, and I think I throw this out to Liam and everybody, and I think Liam, you you mentioned too, I think one item in this particular workflow of creating like a new post type, um, I think one item that was unclear to me even in doing this was like um, the, I think when you go to create a post type, I think a common scenario folks would probably want is like, is that associating like the, the post title um, and while like you can enable, let's see, um, if we go back up here to our, uh, where we registered the form, you can pass along the, what is it? The post title is an option here. You can say post title false or true. Um, and actually let's set that so we can kind of show, yeah, post title true. And if we hop back over here and we'll go to the front end form again. So now this is showing, so this is the, this would be the default kind of post title field. I think, you know, in this, like, again, this scenario, you know, you probably want this to say like maybe recipe title or something. And so there's, a, I feel like a few kind of different approaches you could come at this. Um, the one I chose to take was to, you know, hide the title field and then repurpose the this name field as the post title. Um, and I think this came up, you know, I mentioned this to Liam, the the pre the save post, and then there's the pre-save post, which I think is is worthy of pointing out, like these two ACF hooks, um, save post and pre-save post. Uh, Liam, you clarified, and I, I appreciate it. The the pre-save post is associated with specifically with these front end forms. So um, that's good, good use case. And you can use that for many scenarios. And I think um, I have that linked. Um, Mike, if you wouldn't mind dropping that if you haven't already. Um, but the save post is associated, is a hook that you can use for basically any um, field type on this page. So I think the just kind of the, I would love to hear like maybe your thoughts on like what, you know, if 
for that kind of scenario, you're creating a new post type on the front end and you want one of the fields to be a title for the custom post type, like what kind of, I think that would be worth, um, I'll, I can certainly work with you folks and just get documentation updated. Cause I, I did find some awesome ACF support tickets and it seemed like folks were looking for similar solutions. So maybe we can get some like basic, uh, recommendation or something around there on the one of these uh, ACF form uh, pages. But that, yeah, that's the only kind of like nuance I wanted to call out. So folks, if they dive into this, um, you know, we can sort through that and discuss that. But that is the gist of like working with these forms. Um, yeah, I'll open it up. I don't know if we had any questions, but And if you did have any questions, feel free to, you know, unmute and, and chat. Um, but yeah, thanks, Damon. That was really good. Sure. It's definitely one of those features that, you know, we it's been around for ages. It's kind of it's kind of different to the rest of ACF in the sense that this is fields on the front end and editing fields, field values on the front end, whereas the majority of ACF is admin based. And it's in the editor, it's in the post editor, the block editor, whatever, you know. So it's one of these things that you kind of almost don't expect because it's almost like a form plugin in itself. Um, and it's something that we we haven't historically done a lot to because we don't, we get a few feature requests about, but I think it's not the bulk of what people use ACF for, but it's still a really powerful thing. Um, and I know there's other plugins that build on top of it to make it a bit more robust as a form plugin. Um, Cause you added like the, the trigger for sending an email, you did that in code, right? And obviously if you, if you take a contact form seven or gravity forms, they have really like more features to do those kind of post submission actions. Um, and I think, I think ACF extended adds some stuff to, to the forms to allow you to do things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, interested to know how how people use it and if they if they're still using it. Wanted to check the survey responses from last year, actually. Yeah, I'll stop my share for now. But I'm happy to dive back in and turn it back on if we want to go over anything else. Thanks for sharing all those links too, Mike. No problem. That's a, that's a good question, Earl. Do you have to create a post with the content? And that's, I'm not even too sure because I guess most of it is around. Yeah, I mean, I mean you Mike. You don't have to. It, it, it's based around the concept of that, right? Because it by default, it wants a post type so that it can load the field groups. But you don't have to do that you can provide a, a set of field group ids you can you can mix and match and move things around um and then you'd obviously have to pick up on the save point um and just interrupt it trying to actually create a post at the end and figure out where you want it to go or what you want to do much like damon's code of an email you essentially just send that email and then abort it creating a post type but it's definitely assumed for most cases that you do want to have a post type at the end of it, just so that there's a record, you know, emails could fail to send or something like that. So how using a post type as the storage method of the core data, even if you, even if it's a private post type, that's never displayed in the WordPress admin, just gives you that, that kind of copy of it in the, in the database. So you've got that too. Yeah, and I think this is just a cool feature. It's not necessarily us saying that, you know, don't need to use a form plugin, like, because there's obviously different ways to do things and there's probably better tools for the job. This is just a very, um, if, if you've used ACF to create the post type and you've used ACF to add the fields to add more data to that post type, and then you need a bit of user user creation of that data, then it all goes, works well together and it's, it goes hand in hand. Um, but obviously there's, there's definitely more bells and whistles that you can get elsewhere, I think.
yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the the uploader difference is right now versus uh, WordPress or Basic. Yeah, so uploader WordPress and Basic in a front end form, you're kind of forced to Basic pretty much because you don't want to if you have upload yeah if you have the wordpress uploader that wants to load the media library and let you drag and drop multiple files and things like that but because you won't on the front end form the user won't have authentication like most likely so the um it would fall back to using basic by default but if you were if you've got a system where users are logged in and they have access to that then that's where it would use the you know the wordpress style media library drag and drop set alt tags and all that kind of stuff Nice. And there's, Earl, a, thank there's you a lot of good conversations in Q and A. I was about to say, so uh, we'll get for those of you watching the VOD, uh, feel free to to look at Mike's link uh, to the uh, the write up of this, and we'll put all the Q and A questions in there because they're way too way too complex to read out. Yeah, but thank you, Earl. That's some good questions outside of the the form demo. Just trying to see if they can summarize them. Yeah, one of one of those questions was: Is there a way to add ACF fields to existing core blocks? And I think this is something we've been asked for quite a while, isn't it? But I, I don't think that's technically very easy, and not something we want to support right now. Yeah, and it's not it's not necessarily about us not wanting to support it. It's more about what are you going to do with those fields, right? Like we could probably figure out a way to add ACF fields to a core block when you're editing it, you know, plugins can attach other things there, but because you wouldn't be able to, you know, you're not, unless you've got a dynamic block, which at that point you might as well be using an ACF block. How are you going to get access to the data or switch to based on it. the value of those fields? So yeah, it kind of, uh, it's kind of a logical, for Earl's specific question, it turns out it, it's more about, yeah, you know, kind of use fields there to hide a block based on posts and things like that. And I think that that's probably out of scope of ACF. Um, there's a good plugin called Block Visibility. Is that the Nick Diego right? one? Remember, yeah, it's Nick Diego does that, I think. I knew I knew it was someone that we knew well. Um, and that has ACF support built in. So if you install that, you can uh, you can say, if this ACF option is set to true, share this block, otherwise don't. Uh, and it's, you know, it's got programmatical stuff as well so if you wanted to say oh only if they've come through this google tag show this upsell block or whatever else you want to do then you can do things like that with it uh but yeah i don't think it's a i don't think it's a native acf thing no yeah, and then like you can do other things like you could have meta associated with a post and then do like a block variation and then what, what with the block variation what you can do on the front end is you can do a filter on that specific instance of that block variation and then call to that meta and do something with the render that way. So you could kind of achieve some sort of like a, a relation between a core block and, and ACF data that way. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense to have, if, if we're looking for those integration between blocks or other things like that doesn't, as Liam said, that doesn't necessarily have to live in ACF. Like that's not a native thing. It's, if there's a if there's another plugin that does have that support and makes that integration and then uses ACF for that, then that's probably more specific than us adding a load of core functionality. But yeah, it's a good point on variations. Earl says it's true. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and I think right now a lot of what we're like why why we're I wouldn't even say hesitant to to jump on these things. It's just more that that a lot of it's still kind of in the air and a lot of decisions are still being made about how you want to register these kind of 
pieces of data with these core blocks. So like it, it would it would be risky for us to to jump in on it at this point and then have to, you know, adapt people over time if things change, which they almost certainly will. <laughs> Yeah, that is exactly right. Um, you know, I've talked a lot in the in the Q and A there about things forthcoming of bindings and bits and and how that's going to change how people expose data and how you know we're already thinking about a lot of the improvements that we're going to make to blocks kind of come as a consequence of us starting to think about how we're going to support all that stuff and having to refactor a lot of our kind of base code to move it out. You know. Uh, there's uh we talked a lot i think it was last september so almost a year ago now we did a, a chat friday on the the future of acf blocks and we kind of laid the framework of where we were thinking there you know we've done a lot in the meantime not as much as i would have liked on that that progress but uh six four is a significant kind of foundation foundational piece to let us start moving towards that future and then yeah six five and six six we should be able to iterate quite quickly and adding support for all this new stuff Um, I know the block bindings UI schedules to ship in WordPress six seven and you know no promises, but yeah, I intend to support that as as early as we can. So if we've got an ACF release around that time, then you can you can bet we'll uh, we'll get something in to to help support that. Uh, Earl Alpha and Beaters of ACF, uh, Ian, yeah, there you go. Ian sent the link. We'll put that in the in the writer post and on the video as well on YouTube. Uh, you can join our newsletter there. Um, it's a special news uh, announcements. email thread basically we'll let you know when there's that new alphas and betas and and how to grab them pro releases it'll just appear in your account as alpha and beta and then free you can grab from github uh, we expect you know later this year is what we're saying six four but uh, yeah it's, it's probably a month or two away from having some kind of alpha release yeah that's the best place to best place to hear about it and obviously come to chat fridays now we'll we'll be in the monthly schedule and we can keep keep people updated about the current release and where we're at with the development um just interestingly oh you've you've mentioned in the q a about the width of the sidebar in the block editor is no longer editable in 66 which But, I mean, we are aware of that small width anyway and how that isn't a very good editing experience. But just curiously, I was it even how did you, could you edit it before? Was it draggable or? Did, I think there are plugins that did it. So it's Plug possible it, right. that that plugin has just got broken in, in 6.6. Yeah, CSS. So I think there is a plugin that does it and hopefully they've maintained compatibility, but I, I've not followed it. So I don't know if there's something that's changed significantly. Ah, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Oh, yeah, so CSS custom, custom CSS. Part, part of the problem with that is obviously because it's not natively supported, almost certainly every single WordPress release is going to break it because yeah. something, yeah, they've moved to the site editor right now. So that's why 6.6 .6 has changed. You're actually seeing a whole new editor, but thankfully nothing's actually changed for users and they haven't really noticed it apart from the, the shortcuts. Wait, I'm saying that wrong. What's it called? And the short, I want to say the shortcuts bar, but it's, it's always certainly not called that. No quick actions. Um, quick that's, action. that's what, that's what registered actions. It. Entity actions. Entity actions. Okay. That's the one. <laughs> that bar that you can type in things and then Oh, and oh, the oh you're talking about the command palette. Yeah, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, command, command palette. palette. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh six six also shipped the, the 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 entity actions, which is the new admin um data views um where you can assign an action to a post type item. So where when you click on that, a drop down menu comes out and you can do things with it yeah and, and just just on that sidebar stuff we we try not to like i guess do our own hacks within acf for the site for the block editor itself or the site editor because as liam said it's things are just going to break things are going you know we're, we're we're much more um we we try and work closely with the core team and, and understand what what patterns and ui and ux patterns they want to see or what's going to come and then we can help either you know understand exactly what we need to do to integrate with that or even help them with like decisions that might affect us so we're kind of trying to keep a close working relationship with the core team as well
well yeah so on the on that about about it being more dynamic i think you're going to see that come with the new admin um and that's sort of why why I mentioned the the admin a moment ago is um the the UX and and sort of like the flows of these uh editing these posts in this new data views admin uh it's still being worked out but um the the idea of it is that it's going to be more more fluid and dynamic in that uh you're going to have a list view of all your posts and when you select one there's this now this concept of another sidebar in the, in the site editor, but that sidebar is the same one that you would see in the post editor. So it's kind of a, an area for you to work within. And, and it's almost got like a, a, a blank canvas for you to, to just fill that in based on whatever item was selected in that post list view. So all of that stuff is still kind of getting massaged out and figured out. Um, and I, I think we're like maybe maybe months away from having like a very clear picture of what that's going to look like. Um, but that 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 will fix a lot of these issues with like sidebars not being wide enough or whatever, because if if you ever if you ever get at the time to to experiment with the the new admin, you'll notice things are kind of moving and scaling in and out and and like the it's like three column layout that's just constantly dynamically changing based on what you're doing in there at that time. So I think that stuff is just gonna work out over time. Um, cool. I don't think we've got, we haven't got anything more unanswered in the QA, nothing more in the chat. Um, oh, Eric, yay. So Earl uses Gravity Forms for his forms. That's cool. Uh, and Eric, you have used ACF Forms for testing only. Yeah, that's cool. Eric, uh, sorry, Earl has asked with all this new admin editor stuff, any plans to redo the ACF options interface and how you create fields to be more native? Yeah, Mike, can you grab the link to the, the write-up of the, the future of ACF blocks? Because we talked about that there. Um, we want to, obviously over time, it's almost certain that every field is going to have a React element version of it. Um, and that's that's part of what we're figuring out. You know, how uh, Once we've done that, then everything feels much more native in the block editor, but also in the in the new admin, everything will be React components anyway. So we'll have to move away from the legacy jQuery stuff. Uh, There's a part of the reason why we can't support API v3 yet for, for blocks, because of the way the iframe works, it doesn't let any of the jQuery libraries that WordPress includes itself, you know, be able to target inside of an iframe because they're hard coded not to support that and, and look for the elements in the, in the parent of the DOM. So. Yep, lots of uh, lots of plans there. Lots of work think, to do. It's I think Earl's, yeah, Earl's I think referring to the ACF plugin admin, which like so this would actually it. relate to the data view stuff that I was mentioning earlier. Yeah. Um, so so I mean, it, it this is the future of WordPress, but it's not a future that I think a majority of people are going to be on yet. So it's not one of those things that that is the highest priority in my opinion. But of course, that's that's Ian's call, not my job. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, but, we're tracking it, aren't we? And yeah, yeah so like that, we've even got mockups of how ACF would look in the new editor where things yeah, are I was gonna say, based on well, React. The, so like we are. There's that, and then um, as part of my contributions to to WordPress core, I've been working on a new media library proof of concept using the new data views component. And what's great about that is is all of those learnings and all of those things that surface that we need in the data views feature. Uh, will be applicable to ACF admin pages in, in the exact same way. So everything that that we gain from from that that effort, um, you know, we'll we'll be able to adopt it that much sooner because we'll have yeah. a full view of what it is and we'll be able, able able to even influence what it ends up as. Because I even noticed just like there are certain things that I need at certain points of time where I want to like register an action to a media post type and or an attachment post type. Um, this would give you that sort of you know the, the the this this is how we could surface those needs and and right now not a lot of people are experimenting with the data views i actually couldn't find a single instance on github of someone using the new register entity action which is only available in that new view um so there's so few people right now experimenting with it so not a lot of people are saying hey i need this thing so hopefully we'll be able to surface enough of those yeah and i think our approach will be when the new 
admin comes into WordPress and it's kind of something that we have to tackle, the first thing will just be to make sure the, the ex existing ACF UI just works as it inside it. And then we'll, we'll kind of evaluate how, because there's going to be changes in that user experience of like going to the post screen and obviously the data views clicking on it and then having the post editing next to it it's in a, it, rather than in a separate screen and whether or not that sort of like pattern of of that ui will work for for field groups and fields like it, is that going to be good for us we'll have to sort of work through that and then yeah and that's sort of where we change earlier. it's it's a bit of a blank canvas in current state where that sidebar you can populate it with just about anything in the same way that you can populate the editor sidebar but it's not the editor it's like a, another one of those kind of sidebar contexts that can be filled in so um yeah, so like data, think of data views as like, uh, uh, or or this this admin screen would be loading a list of your your ACF field groups. That's a post type, um, and when you would select one of those, that's for us to figure out the UX of what happens. Like, uh, does it open up in the sidebar? Does it open up in a pop up? That sort of stuff. So, lot to lot to discover there. Yeah, yeah, and and it's it's going to be a hard one for us to prioritize, in a way as well, because obviously smallish team. There's going to be, as long as ACF works na natively as it does now inside the new UI, but obviously not with the same UX patterns, it's not going to be probably something that we'll um, spend a, a load of time rebuilding straight away because we'll be busy doing actual features for ACF and features in the block editor, features of, you know, the features of the plugin rather than. You know, it doesn't feel that long since ACF 6.0 where we redid the UI there. So that will be, it It will be nice to just to pause and see how it goes. And yeah, exactly. Little ROI. Alrighty, well, I think we've got a couple of minutes left. So unless anyone's got um, a, another question that's been burning we can probably start to wrap it up. And I think that's been a really good, really good session. Good, good conversation about various things. Really good demo. Thank you, Damon, for doing that. Oh, last question. Are any of the ACF team going to WordCamp US this year? Who is it? You're definitely going, Ant, from the ACF team. Anybody else, Damon, are you going to WordCamp US from a WP Engine point of view? Yeah, yeah, I'm going. I'm presenting too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so you can catch Ant and Damon in and around the WP Engine booth, and and obviously Cash Damon's presentation. If, you, if you, have we got the link yet to that, can we put stick that in the in the blog post when we get it, or is it a bit too yeah, early? No, for I don't the think the schedule's website? been announced yet. Yeah, yeah, it's, yep. it's September, isn't it? Cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. Look out for them, Earl, and then you can chat ACF in person. That'd be cool. Alrighty. Yeah. Thanks again, Damon, for your lovely demo. Um, good to good to investigate a feature that doesn't sort of get as much um, information and press from us. Um, and we'll be we'll be now back in a month's time. I'll stick the um, I'll stick the the new registration link on the ACF Chat Fridays page on the website. Um, and maybe we'll do an email, Mike, to everyone just to say we're now going to monthly. This is the next one. Go and sign up for it so you can hear about it then. Um, but as always, thanks for coming. Thanks to the team. We will see you next time.